All right, good afternoon and welcome to another installment of our webinar series for our Coast Guard Academy admissions partners today. Uh, we have with us here the director of the Loy Institute for Leadership here at the Coast Guard Academy. who will be talking to you, our admissions volunteers and any other students, parents, cadets, uh, you know, audience out there who are interested to, to learn more about the leadership development program here at the Coast Guard Academy. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to John. Nice. He's going to be driving the slides today. We're going to go for about half an hour, um, leave a little bit of time at the end for some Q&A. There's a lot of great stuff. So those of you who are participating today as we go through, uh, just write your questions for us. We'll make sure to answer those either as we go along or I'll make sure to go back uh, and answer those at the at the uh, end. So thank you so much for being here today. And John, I'll let you take it Thanks. away. Thanks, Alex. Uh, pleasure to be here. I am a class of 89 graduate, originally from Pittsburgh, and have been here at the Academy in a variety of capacities, um, really since 1999, uh, when I was on active duty. I spent five years teaching in the management department, um, uh, all the leadership courses, so organizational behavior and leadership and organizational development quantitative methods, strategy, accounting, and then spent three years in the barracks where I was the regimental officer, uh, like a company officer at the regimental level. Um, did did a couple extra years uh, on active duty as a comptroller, retired, took a federal civil service at the Leadership Development Center for, um, for the larger Coast Guard, so doing leader development for everybody except cadets, um, and then took this assignment at the Loy Institute for Leadership um, three and a half years ago. So. We've been on this journey, my, my small team and I, Ellen Metcalf from the class of 87, um, and uh, Toby Olson from the class of 94, and Mina Waters, um, who's a spouse of, uh, of Aaron Waters of the class of 94, um, uh, and, and Trevor Prophet, our, our research assistant. We've been on this, this uh, project to develop the Coast Guard Academy Leader Development Program, the CGALDP. And we know that we've been developing leaders of character here um, since since um, since Ca Worth Ross, Cadet Worth Ross and his three classmates, six classmates in the uh, class of 1879. Um, but uh, but what we're trying to do is codify that now. We know something good happens, um, but just like any accreditation effort or ISO 9000, we're trying to make repeatable processes um, that are measurable. Uh, that's what we've been trying to do over the last couple of years here um, at the Academy with this, what, what we're going to show you today, the CGA LDP. So again, it, on the surface, it ought to look very, very, very familiar to you. We're going to be talking about Swab Summer, we're going to be talking about Eagle, we're talking about Cadre, um, but sort of underneath the hood is where we hope that we're adding some value with repeatable curriculum, with measuring cadets against competencies, with re-racking their um, evaluation system. So. So nothing all that snazzy uh, on the surface, but under the hood, we should be seeing some some new stuff. Um, and Alex is monitoring the, the chat feed. So as we go through this, if you have any questions, please feel free to chat and Alex will chime in and and um, and and uh, stop me there. So um, so our agenda today, uh, I wanted to introduce you to Panache Mutombo, who graduated last year. And and um, and before we go under the hood. Uh, let's see what it looks like at the finished product with uh, with one of our recent graduates describing his process while he was a second class cadet in it. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the theory that's that's related to this in leader development and adult development, and then I'll introduce you to the the guts of the of, of the program. So let's start off here and meet um, uh, Panache Mutombo, um, uh, with whom I had the. So I like that video of Panache um, telling you from the front end, like what the experience looks like. And it's really immersive, as he says, he's pulling in his partners, his sponsor families, um, uh, and, and you know, they're, they're really immersing themselves in the entire experience. So love that video about him. Um, so what does leadership development look like in today's world? This is a, a, a screenshot, a photo from when our Commandant Admiral Zunkampf, our prior Commandant, did his annual core wide address to the cadets, which is part of the leadership development program. We bring in the commandant once a year. Admiral Schultz will be here with us um, March, uh, I think it's the 7th. And um, and so this was his Admiral Zunkamp's address uh, year, uh, two years ago, where he talked about the changing needs of leaders today. We're in a much more, uh, we're in a much different world now than, um, than when he was an ensign. We're in a, a VUCA world, um, and there's been a lot written on this recently. Um, General Dempsey pub has been publishing on this, um, where we're in a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous environment. And that places 
challenging demands on our leaders. And we, we know that um, we know that that's a complex world. So we have to train leaders a little differently than perhaps when, when we were coming through. So, um, so the Center for Creative Leadership has done a nice job of capturing this, this challenge um, in what they call horizontal leader development and vertical leader development. And quite simply, horizontal is adding skills and competencies. You know, it's us getting better at time management or accountability or, um, or uh, other sorts of leadership behaviors. You can measure those with 360 degree feedbacks or, or performance reports. But what, what CCL is purporting um, uh, that, that's more challenging is we need to expand our capacity to, to grow our own leadership development. They're calling that vertical, to think more systemically in complex ways, in, in three-dimensional chess kind of ways, and to, to even realize that you need to learn more. Admiral Allen would talk about black swans and, um, and, and wicked problems. And so, you know, if, if, we knew, if we knew that we wanted to move the Great Wall of China one meter to the north, that would be a challenge, but we could figure out how to do that. It would just take us some time. But what about, um, what about uh, uh, an oil spill, a spill of national significance um, in, that hit the Gulf Stream during a Cat 5 hurricane? Um, whoa, you know, and so he, we would call that a black swan because we've never seen one before, but certainly it could happen. And how would we do that? We don't even know where we would begin to, to face that challenge. So thinking vertically would help us think more uh, systemically, more complex ways um, to take on those kinds of problems. I gave you a big sort of strategic level national one, but you could imagine that down in your own workplace with the climate issues that we've been having, uh, the conversations we've been having in our um, in our in our worlds, uh, so so we need to change the way we do leader development, and this is rooted. West Point is following this model as well. They're taking Robert Keegan's model of adult development, and they're focusing in on these. Um, can they see this cursor? They're focusing in on these three levels here um, of the socialized mind, the self-authoring mind, and the self-transforming uh, mind, and um, and so what they're saying is that a socialized mind. Uh, a socialized mind person just wants to be on the team. They're thrilled to be part of something bigger than themselves, and they go along to get along. Um, and uh, and so they're just thrilled to be in the car. I'm going to use this little analogy of being in a car with rel with time on the horizontal axis and complexity on the vertical axis. You can see that, you know, uh, when they're younger uh, and the world is a little bit simpler, or their perception of the world is a little simpler, they're just thrilled to be out part of the team. But what we want to do is drive our cadets to be, and, and, and everybody's going through this in our adult development, we want to end up being self-authored, where we're in charge of our own uh, world. We're, we're driving things. We want to be driving the car. Um, but what the ultimate goal is to get people to that next layer where they can see the multiple perspectives. They can see that there's an alternative viewpoint to, to, to perceive the world in. You may have seen those um, those little puzzles where, or those little diagrams where if you look at it one way, it's an old woman's face. And if you look at the same photograph, same drawing slightly differently, it looks like a younger woman's face. So it's the ability to hold those two frames simultaneously in your mind. Um, and that's a challenge. So there, you might want to consider remaking the roadmap. So West Point is trying to drive our people through there at our academy. We're trying to get them from socialized to self-authoring with a recognition about moving towards self-transforming. But the Army would say that um, only about 30% of their 30-year-olds are getting up to that ability to see multiple perspectives. So that's how it's rooted in sort of adult development and leader development trends. So operationalizing that here at the Academy, um, we've created what I like to call the five shareds. So it's going to be a shared philosophy, a shared program, and we'll talk about all of these a shared standard, shared language, and shared journey. Um, and so we'll dive right into those. So with our shared mission, this will describe this video will describe in, in, uh, in 71 seconds um, how we build leaders of character. Notice shared mission is not one of my five shareds, but, uh, but, uh, but that would give us, I guess, a sixth. But you can see even in this diagram um, how that triangle uh, uh, sort of harnesses our approach to leader development. It is a, a developmental model as opposed to a compliance model. So back when I was a cadet um, in the 80s, we had a compliance-based model. You followed the rules or you got demerits and, and, you, and on reporting day, they'd say, look to the left, look to the right. Neither of them will be there at graduation. And we did have roughly a 50% attrition rate. Um, uh, so you either sank or swam. And, um, and, and that was our Darwinistic approach to, to how we built ensigns. 
Um, not saying there's anything wrong with that, but we made a decision in, along with the other service academies in 2000 um, to shift to a developmental mindset to say uh, we want to help um, grow and develop um, our, our, our ensigns, our leaders of character. And now our retention rate is where at Alex? 80? Uh, we're just above 80 or between 80 and 85 percent. 85 percent. So um, so you, so in order to achieve that, we had to do things differently here. And that journey really started for us around 2000 when Admiral Olson was the superintendent. Um, so you can see here our philosophy in that triangle, the, the guide to officer and leader development, where at the apex, we're trying to build a leader of character. The definition is in the gold print down at the bottom, one who embodies the Coast Guard core values um, uh, and influences and inspires others to achieve a goal by seeking to, and I love these, discover the truth deciding what is right and demonstrating the courage to act accordingly always. Um, so that that's what we mean. That's the leader part is influencing and inspiring others to achieve a goal and of character is the truth, um, uh, deciding what is right and demonstrating that courage when you know what the what, what right looks like. We do that through our LEAD strategy um, and LEAD, it, that acronym LEAD, you can see there on the, on the screen, um, learn from theory, experience through practice, analyze using reflection, deepen understanding through mentoring. I like to use the acronym TERM. Um, this was uh, developed by Captain Paul Sweat when he was uh, the, uh, the faculty member in the management department. Um, and he initially did come in with the acronym TERM, theory, experience, reflection, mentoring um, as the model. And then we changed it into LEAD to make it seem more attractive. But theory, experience, if you're able to meld um, theory, models, someone else's experiences, some book or text that you've read with your own practice. You have to, uh, you have, to have experiences uh, to, for us to learn. We learn from our experiences, but then taking that sense-making time to, to sit back and reflect and then deepen understanding through mentoring. So mentors can help us process and, and uh, deepen our understanding. We do that through the role, and you saw this all in the video. We do that through those roles of escalating um, uh, uh, responsibility from being a follower to a role modeler to a, a cadre, second class here, and a first class organizational leader across the physical, athletic, intellectual, uh, physical, and values domains. And then these frequent quality interactions. We know re leader development happens one cadet, one interaction at a time. It happens retail, not wholesale. You can't say I did it last week to a class of. It's every single interaction you're, happening, you're having. And we encourage the faculty, staff, coaches, and Eagle crew members to take the time out to make those frequent quality interactions. Um, we have, we've aligned with, and here's where we're getting under the hood, right? We, we're, we've aligned with the Coast Guard's leadership competencies. They have 28 in total that they have decided uh, 15, 20 years ago to embrace. And they're in four buckets, leading self, leading others, leading performance and change, and leading the Coast Guard. And we've said here at a session and the cadet program, we're going to focus on very deliberately developing the cadets in the first two categories, the 13 competencies related to leading self and leading others. And you see those on your on your screen. So the rest of what we're going to show you with curriculum is we're steeping our curriculum in the shared programs um, into uh, into these comp by these competencies. So the other part of our philosophy is these guiding principles. So the faculty, staff, and coaches have really been um, latching on to these. This is how we do, do, do leadership development. We, we, number one, place the weight of responsibility squarely on the cadet's shoulders. They have to feel the heat, um, whether that's standing the watch on Eagle um, or morning colors or the responsibility for being the officer of the deck. Um, they need to feel like they are in charge uh, of, of whatever the little missionary is and responsibility for the um, for holding the underclass accountable. So they need to feel that weight of responsibility on their shoulders. Tolerate risk of failure for above the waterline risk of failure. So if a cannonball goes through the upper to gallant, we send the bosun up with a stitch and they fix it, no big deal. That cannonball hits below the waterline. Now we have flooding and we have, you know, we have greater risk. We need, we all learn from our mistakes and we need to find that space where we're allowing the cadets to learn from theirs. But of course we wanna be careful about what kind of mistakes we're allowing them to learn from. Um, take the time whenever possible to explain the why. Leaders start with why. Um, this generation we know is hungry for the why. We all want purpose in our lives. We all want to know the reasoning behind things. The cadets aren't entitled to the why, but it's a good habit for us as faculty, staff, coaches, and Eagle crew members to whenever possible take the time to explain the why so that when we don't have the time, um, they'll, say, they'll have that trust there to know that there must be a reason behind it. 
adult to adult frequent quality interactions and initiate them. We know with this generation, unlike my generation, which went out and played and um, we played, you know, with with our peers, um, adults were somebody off to the side and we would, you know, we would knock on their door when we needed them. But this generation has adults programmed into their lives, right? They, they have organized sports, they have organized scout troops. So um, we, we might sit there and say, well, my door is always open, come knock on it. But they've never really learned that skill to knock on an adult's door. So we have to initiate that adult to adult because a lot of times we think of them as kids. Um, it's easy to get in that trap. Um, and then there's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So we need to really think about these, these cadets as young adults and do that quality interaction I talked about before. Sculpting the learning environment is saying leadership is happening everywhere. We need to find our classroom in the hallways, on the practice fields, um, uh, uh, in, in the parade field, and we need to differentiate the instruction for each individual learner's needs. So sculpt that. We need to take responsibility for that and sculpt that learning environment and then support the struggle. And I think the faculty loves this one the best, Alex, is uh, Professor Todd Taylor, who's been teaching here for a long, long time. Um, so he really lommed onto this one when I said supporting the struggle means when they divest themselves of all symbols of cadet life on the third Wednesday in May after having been in residence for 200 weeks, there is joy with that release of pain when they throw their covers and shoulder boards up in the air. And, and, and that release of pain, that joy from the release of pain should be because they've crossed the finish line of the marathon, right? It, it should not be that they've survived their captivity and now they've been released from, from this uh, place. The pain looks very, very similar, right? But it feels so differently. So what we wanna be doing as faculty, staff and coaches is supporting that struggle to cheering them on along the way, not make it a 19 mile marathon. It's still gonna be a 26.2 mile marathon supporting them, but, um, but we're on their side as they push themselves through it. And that's, that's, a, that's a space that we're trying to, to proselytize to our um, faculty, staff, coaches and Eagle crew members. So here is our shared program um, where what we've done on the horizontal and then the columns are the competencies that you saw earlier in the categories of leading self and leading others. But what, what you see on the rows now are the what we're calling core programs. Every cadet is gonna go through these programs. And again, they're ones we're very familiar with. Swab Summer, uh, fourth class year in Chase Hall. We all spent four years in Chase Hall in residence. So we're codifying what's going on in those uh, in Chase Hall from a leader development standpoint uh, and which competencies we're gonna focus in on. Um, so you see that we have Eagle on there. You see that we have um, every cadet's gonna take an organizational behavior course third class year. They're all gonna go on Eagle for five weeks. They're all gonna go on coastal sail for, uh, for two weeks. If you're a partner, you probably know that, but in my day, 40% of us went on looters and now 100% of them are going on the two week cadre uh, coastal sail experience so we can count that as a core program write curriculum to it and know that they've all gone through it um, they, they're all going to have a three-week cadre experience whether that's an aim which many of you are involved with and we thank you so much for doing that chase hall uh waterfront on eagle or our scholars program but all of our second class cadets are going to have a five uh, uh three week cadre experiences with two weeks of preparation linked into that and they're all going to go to the fleet as a first class cadet so what you see with the matrix is we've linked in the, um, the competencies to these programs. So you see, I'll just pick one out, I'll pick Coastal Sail. So what we're doing on Coastal Sail, if you follow the matrix there, is we're, we're, we're doing a deep dive in Coastal Sail training to, um, to team building technical, uh, te technical proficiency, right? So they're gonna go through, and we'll, we'll show you the theory in a little bit, but they're gonna use Tuckman's form, storm, norm, perform model um, for group team dynamics. At the same time, they're learning all the technical proficiency that's going on with, um, with, with navigation, with sailing, with, um, you know, with, um, uh, with, with cooking, with all, with all the technical things that go along with, with being on that boat for the two weeks. Um, and so you can see how when we do a deep dive in a certain competency on a certain program, we can create a curriculum. Shared standards. So um, we want to measure and evaluate the cadets' proficiency against those 13 competencies. And so what we've done is we've taken the cadets' CERs, their cadet evaluation reports, their performance reports, and married those dimensions up with these competencies. And what you see here is data from an, a, a real cadet. Cadet X is a real person, um, a third class cadet. And we have, I got to take my glasses off to, uh, to see the screen, but we've um, 
you can see their performance report in these different competencies on aligning values, fourth class year in the uh, in the Chase Hall, fourth class year uh, in the fall of Chase Hall, in the spring of Chase Hall on Eagle, and then what they got in Swab Summer, followership for the other for the other uh, competencies, et cetera. So you can get a, a, an aggregate transcript, if you will, about how a cadet is developing on their on their leadership, and we it it can trigger us to be able to design some targeted mentoring opportunities to help you know to help them improve in a particular competency. Um, so, uh, so I did mention some of those core programs. Um, again, they're all going to go through SWAP Summer. They're all going to do um, uh, cadet training in the um, uh, in the barracks, and they're all going to go on coastal sales. And they, so we, and they receive evaluation for each one of these. Right, programs. right, right. So they're going to get evaluated against the competencies in each of these programs, and that was the data that I just showed you. Thanks, Alex. So uh, the fourth shared is the shared language so there's a lot of leadership models out there what the coast guard has done is they've chosen several that they're saying we're going to train everybody in the coast guard to these we're going to train our our mid-grade petty officers our chiefs our officers and now our cadets all on these shared models so um, we won't go into depth on on a lot of these but i will just um show you uh, Kuzis and Posner. So the main model that they've chosen is Kuzis and Posner's Leadership Challenge, the five practices of exemplary leaders. And I love it in its simplicity is, is uh, leaders. And this, was, this, this one's been around for 30 or maybe 35 years now. So it's, and it's been derived, uh, Jim Kuzis and Barry Posner derived it empirically by asking uh, people, tell us the characteristics you most admire in your leader. And these came out. They model the way, they inspire a shared vision, they challenge the process, they enable others to act, and they encourage the heart. Um, Coasties, and when we started looking at this when I was at the Leadership Development Center, um, our O5s, our commanders, really blocked it, encouraged the heart. But when you said, oh, that really means command climate and, you know, and uh, recognizing individual excellence, we give end of tour awards like all the time for individual excellence. So we encourage the heart more than, more than any organization out there. We just call it something different. Um, uh, so these five practices, it's about the perceived frequency. We want our leaders to be um, to be to be demonstrating these practices, to be perceived as doing these practices very, very frequently. And um, uh, and so that that's one of the shared models we're using. There are a bunch of other ones like DISC. We went away from Myers-Briggs to use DISC, because, if you're familiar with those, because um, while we love the granularity of Myers-Briggs, we found DISC to be just easier to keep in your mind. The other set of shared language which is coming, uh, which we're using, is, um, is a model on emotional intelligence. To, in order to affect that vertical development that I talked about earlier, um, we know that uh, it's really all about emotional intelligence. It's about understanding, being self-aware and being able to manage your own triggers, your own behavior, and then be other aware. Have that sense of empathy for how others are feeling. And then how do I influence others? How do I, how do I help influence their behavior? their reactions to emotional triggers. And, and this model is really going to help us. Uh, Goldman's work's been around for almost 20 years now. Um, and uh, you'll, you hear more and more and more around in the literature about emotional intelligence with various authors. Um, but basically, if you start with yourself, self-awareness, you're able to then um, uh, have empathy and, and try, to, try to imagine how others are feeling, what their triggers are, as well as your own, uh, your own behavior. And then both of those lead into the uh, the ability to influence others' behavior. So that's just another one of our shared language models. And then finally, in our shared is the shared journey. And this is a, a new space for us. But we know leader development. While I told you there's those standard programs that every cadet's going through, while every cadet's going through the same program, first of all, there's a lot of other stuff that's going on that's not part of those common programs. Some of them are doing honor remediation when they when they uh, end up getting in trouble. Some of them are going on uh, phenomenal field trips or doing capstone projects or you know, leader development is happening in a lot of different places. We want them to be able to articulate that journey and capture it and share it to, in order to de deepen understanding through mentoring. So we've, um, we're, we're, we're rolling out this electronic portfolio with them to, uh, to try to capture their side of the journey. So this is a screenshot from, from um, third class Quinn uh, here. It, it puts your vital data up top those uh, where it says home, fourth class, third class, second class, first class, those are drop downs where there'll be a, additional postings in there. 
Um, and uh, she's got a quote up there. She's got her current objectives from both near term and far term. I love how she goes from wanting to be a scholar's cadre to a department head as a first class cadet to go into a sector to number five, start a family, enjoy the good life. Like, I love that one. And then what I really love is that she's putting on there um, her mentors and advisors, and they would in in real time have their their real emails and, and phone numbers on there so that these people can say, oh, you're part of, uh, of Cadet Huen's life. You know, let's let's um, compare notes and see how we can scaffold and support her both in what um, what actually Mary Hanaberry is uh, uh, Mary Hanaberry uh, Alex's wife is working on this with me. She says we shouldn't just have this team. This we call this a gold team work when they are um, struggling, but we should also rally this team when they're in celebration. So um, so I appreciate that from from your other half there. Um, she's she's that's a great piece of insight that she's been bringing on to us. And you'll notice down at the very very bottom of there we have Amot, our Academy Minority uh, uh, Outreach Team member uh, listed. In, in her case. She's plugged in directly with Lieutenant Commander Park, um, but it's nice, especially for those uh, AMOT members who aren't local here, for, for the rest of us that are here to sort of say, oh my gosh, they have a real connection with this AMOT member and know how to, who to reach out to, and then with the phone number and email, how to. So, um, so uh, we can hear uh, Panache close us down with putting all the pieces back.